Guys, I just found out today. Did you know that people on the internet can lie about things? A very long time ago now, I did a video covering urban legends and myths in video games. And that video sucks, please don't watch it. And then not too long ago, I did a video about fake leaks in games. But this time, I wanted to talk about video game hoaxes. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Adam Diamond Bolt, all of those are the exact same thing. And to that I would say, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'm really not sure what it is that separates a hoax from a rumor exactly. To me, a hoax has always been something that someone has to have intentionally made to try and trick people. And yet, whenever I Google, like, hoaxes in things like movies, for example, it always comes up with things like the Hanging Munchkin in The Wizard of Oz, or the subliminal horniness in The Lion King. Like, those aren't hoaxes, right? That's just like a thing that someone went around telling people one day. So, I think you find that like most of the classic game hoaxes come from either like that stage of the pre-internet or that little bit after where people still weren't aware that you could just like lie on the internet. And I kind of feel like that magic has been lost a little bit now that people can just like instantly hack into a game's files and data mine the entire thing just to prove you wrong. Not to say that it's impossible to do now though, as shown by the great Nier Automata secret church mystery from last year. I was very much on the outside of this one, like I only came across like a couple posts on Twitter about some secret hidden area that had just been found in the game after like five years and like thought nothing of it because I've only played like four hours of it so as far as I know the whole rest of the game is a hoax. But after finally reading into it much later after it was already over, this story is an absolutely incredible roller coaster that you just had to be there for. So. In June of 2022, a Reddit user by the name of Sad Futago began making several posts in the near subreddit about how to access an obviously non-existent church in the game. These understandably didn't get a lot of attention at first, but eventually they kept trying until they posted a video showing them going through a hidden door that nobody had ever accessed before. One of the most agreed upon theories that was going around as it was getting really popular was that it was some kind of like ARG promoting an upcoming near game, or the director of the game was just really, really bored. Which, by the way, would have totally been within the realm of possibility, because the series' creator, Yoko Taro, is pretty well known for hiding shit like this in his games. Like, only a year prior, someone found that by using an extremely convoluted password and standing in one specific spot, they could skip to the very end of the game and unlock a ton of extra features that no one knew about until three years after the game's release, which literally sounds like one of those April Fool's Day pranks that you'd read in, like, a gaming magazine or something. It meant that something this huge being undiscovered up until this point was entirely believable to people. And even though some tried other ways of finding the door, like clipping beneath the map, or even ripping it from the game to search it in wireframe form, even with all of the doubt and suspicion, it still didn't quell that possibility that maybe this was actually for real. And then, people found out that in the original version of the stage that was cut in the final game, there was actually a church, but then they found out it was just reused from Bayonetta 2. But then, after Sad Futago posted pictures of their copy of the game, showing that it was the console version, meant that there was a possibility that they had the version 1.0 of the game that had never been updated if they just had, like, really bad internet. And that's why he was the only one that was able to access it. It was all coming together. As it gained more and more attention, even outside of the subreddit and onto gaming news websites, Sad Futago gradually released a series of videos revealing that after accessing a secret door and going through a secret hallway, and even more secret church area was hidden beneath a level in the game that nobody had ever seen before. A room with a body lying on an altar, an unkillable shadow blob enemy thing in the corner, and a chest that they couldn't open because they weren't playing as the right character. And then obviously everyone on the subreddit completely lost their shit. With the footage looking that convincing, it really started to shift the narrative away from being a hoax and into something that Sad Futago was the very first person to ever find. Then over the coming weeks after some further church footage and a series of cryptic unrelated screenshots of something else they found in the game, Sad Futago posted a link to a Twitch channel. And then, on July 29th, 2022, it was revealed live that the whole thing was done by a team of three modders who just wanted to promote a cool mod they made that got a little bit out of hand, and along with the revelation that one of the three was working on the mod remotely while being on a holiday on a laptop the whole time as it was getting popular, they then released the mod publicly so everyone could finally access the church themselves. And that's why this one is absolutely up there with some of the goats, okay? Despite it all being fake, the journey to get there with all of the theories and speculation and the slow drip feed of anticipation with each new piece of evidence made it so much fun, even just to read about a year later. It genuinely makes me so happy that we can still have like large-scale game hoaxes like this that can trick so many people nowadays, especially one that doesn't involve a bunch of people pretending to fall for it like this next one. Another pretty recent one that you might remember that's only a few 
few years older was that whole Super Mario 64 is personalized hoax. While Mario 64 has had like hundreds of rumors throughout the years that 10 year old me fell for every single time, the fact that its most famous one, L is real, the whole myth about Luigi being secretly hidden in the game, technically did turn out to be true in some form over 25 years later after the Nintendo Giga Leak in 2020 where a whole bunch of their game's source codes got leaked to the public, showing that there had been a Luigi model hidden in the files of the game all this time. And dude, getting to watch people put Luigi back in the game in real time on Twitter was something I will honestly never forget. And so with the game being on everyone's minds that year, it seemed like everyone collectively agreed the next step was to turn Mario 64 into a horror game. I kind of want to say most of it started with the Wario apparition, a creepypasta-esque post someone made on 4chan about a supposed hidden encounter in the game where Wario's head would appear and chase you down a hallway, which like obviously is complete bullshit, but visually it's inspired by Nintendo's presentation at E3 in 1996. Anyway. Which along with that Nintendo Giga Leak that did actually reveal new things being in the game all this time later, it went on to inspire the Super Mario 64 Iceberg, which starts off by listing fun little oddities and facts about the game and then just progressively starts making shit up. Like its final entry, the phrase Super Mario 64 is personalized. So that game that like millions of people played when they were kids that they've definitely misremembered stuff about? Well yeah, that's actually an AI that the game uses to procedurally generate a different experience for the player in the same time title where the fucking camera doesn't even work. It's worth saying though that this one is entirely tongue in cheek. As far as I'm aware, no one legitimately believed a haunted warrior head was gonna come out of the game and eat you. But I mean, they were doing like such a good job of role playing falling for a creepypasta that I like legitimately couldn't tell if people were being serious or not. There was also this really cool but very short lived ARG that came out around the same time called the Super Mario 64 Beta Archive with these like found footage videos sort of like chronicling supposed early builds of the game that was like legitimately really impressive in how it was made, but unfortunately crumbled due to some internal drama that the team was involved in. To go through the complete lore of the whole Mario 64 personalization stuff, I think would need to be its own video in itself with how complex it gets. Something about like government experiments brainwashing you through the game or some shit, I, I it's, it's really dumb. There is an entire website called the MIPS Hole Wiki dedicated to chronicling every single made up anomaly about this game, and the whole thing is entirely in character to the point where it is kind of freaking me out a little bit. There is a page called AI Dementia. What does that even mean? And like going through the wiki, some of it kind of does get to me, and then some of it is birthday toad. Oh, one more Mario one that I can think of that I wouldn't even really call a hoax so much as just people being dumb. Meet Scrupulous Fingor, an eldritch abomination spawned from a single post about a supposed unused ghost enemy in New Super Mario Bros. DS that was made by the blatant parody Twitter account Cut Video Game, where not a single one of their tweets contains a true fact. But this one blew up way more than I'm sure they were expecting, with like some people that genuinely believed it and others who just kind of adopted him for a little bit. It was you! You are the cringe ass Nene baby of legend. The post continues to say that it was fully coded into the game and when Miyamoto was asked about it, he disregarded the question, seemingly unusually upset. I do think the genius of this one is that it is like believable enough at a glance if you're like scrolling really quickly that it could be something from the game. Maybe. I do fucking love this joke of just making something up and then just trying to gaslight everybody by pretending it was there the whole time. Like that Simpsons meme Graggle that also wasn't too long ago that I'm very sure was the inspiration for this one anyway. Continuing with that earlier theme of games with huge open worlds hiding something mysterious for people to find is literally any game that Rockstar has ever made. Since almost every single one of them has inspired their own humongous list of creatures that people have claimed they've run into throughout the years. One of the most famous of course being the Ratman in Grand Theft Auto 4 which supposedly is this mutated rat creature hiding beneath the sewers with only a single blurry and totally legitimate screenshot as proof. The other most infamous one of course was would be Bigfoot being in San Andreas. And then there were the ghost cars in San Andreas that actually turned out to just be a glitch, but the rest of them are completely unfounded BS. The amount of shit that people have made up seeing in these games is so immense that the full list on the GTA Myths wiki feels almost endless. You got bears, dwarves, dinosaurs, aliens, Slender Man, Pyramid Head, Bikini Bottom, Children, CJ's Mom's Ghost, Pirates, 
Patrick Bateman, and Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Some of these had fake screenshots to go with the claims, and some were just purely people making shit up. But for some reason, I was absolutely obsessed with this stuff as a kid. Like, to the point where I'm really surprised I didn't turn into a conspiracy theorist. I swear to god, I used to watch this series of videos about a guy looking for, like, any of the myths that were in Bully. Like, I vaguely remember one being about a mermaid or something, where, like, 90% of the video was just him standing in one place and listening to ambient noises that might vaguely resemble what he's looking for if you cope hard enough, which was absolutely an awesome use of my time. And what would a video about game hoaxes be without another round of gaming magazines taking the piss? Expert Gamer Magazine in 1999 had an article claiming that your Dragonite in Pokemon Red and Blue could evolve into a Yoshi, complete with almost believable art and your typical stupidly complicated instructions. With the prerequisites of having to have beaten the game and collected all 150 Pokemon, you also apparently needed two people who both owned one copy of the game each. Then you would have to trade one player a Dratini for them to evolve into Dragonite, and then have them trade it back to you, and then go to the spot where Mewtwo is found in the game, and upon using the Firestone on on your Dragonite, he will of course absolutely not turn into Yoshi. The official Nintendo website even got in on it one time for an April Fool's joke with a page saying that you could evolve Licky Tongue into Luigi, with yet another hilariously lengthy process that involved turning your Game Boy upside down. Then there was Rankles the Otter, a DeviantArt tier fake Sonic character that Sega Magazine promised a whole million pounds to anyone who could find him hidden in Sonic and Knuckles. Unlike a lot of these other ones, these guys gave up within the same paragraph that they were trying to trick people, and also something about contacting Alcoholics Anonymous, but do you think I'm gonna read that far, bro, when I could be looking for Rankles the Otter right now? And finally, I thought we could end on a hoax done by the developers themselves this time, with Accounting Plus, a very obscure VR game made by the same guys as the Stanley Parable and one of the two guys who made Rick and Morty that we don't talk about anymore, with an ongoing joke about a secret hidden zoo level being in the game. I'd never seen this one before working on this video, so I had to watch a whole two game theory videos just to get the full story. And MapHat's videos really tried to get people on board joining his efforts to solve this mystery because it was pretty unknown at the time and I guess still even now considering that I've never heard of it before in my entire life. This whole gag all started way back at the very beginning when they first announced it at the Game Awards. And I heard Man. there's a secret zoo level or something? Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of hard work went into A lot it. of work for a very small sliver of the fans that will be able to find it. Incredibly okay. difficult to find Animals a secret zoo. zoo all kinds of stuff. Clowns. I mean, we didn't, you saw it in the trailer. The clown. Okay. That's where the clown's from. Okay. Good luck finding it though. That's the Twitch clown. streamers, I we're, think. We're okay, yeah, in hindsight, it's pretty obvious they're taking the piss. But when the game finally came out, there were a whole bunch of little references to it hidden throughout, with the most blatant one being this tape that you can see in the distance of one level that would, in theory, allow you to use the level select to travel straight to it, like all of the other tapes in the game do, but it is just conveniently out of reach so that you can't ever reach it. And that's pretty much what this whole thing was like. Honestly, this one got, like, way too complicated for me to understand. There were, like, secret codes being sent out at the bottom of promotional emails that would, like, lead to different clues on other websites, and as the hunt began gaining a bit of traction online, they even added an entire level to the game with a hidden area dedicated entirely to making fun of people speculating about the zoo level. Whoa! Whoa, okay, 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 so, you're interested in the secret zoo level, right? Oh, man, I've been there, I've been where you are right now. I was you five weeks ago, man, I've been fucking, I've been looking through this entire game. Do you get it? They're calling you a clown. So essentially, they added a bunch of secrets and clues that led to nowhere just to waste people's time with a fake ARG for a level that isn't even in the game and is designed intentionally to infuriate people with no payoff. I love it. There definitely are still believers of the hidden zoo level out there somewhere, but if even MatPat couldn't find any trace of it in the game's files, and knowing that it's been like four years since either of those game theory videos came out, I think it might be time to accept that there never was a secret zoo level. Then again, Justin Roiland said it was real only about six months ago, so unless... Oh, the secret zoo level is 100% real. Yeah, that's... that's...